Istanbul, one of the most important cities in history and the only city in the world to span two continents. It's a cultural melting pot where East meets West across the Bosphorus Strait. It's huge, busy and one of the world's most visited cities, but is a place that's been on our bucket list for so many years and we're so excited to finally be able to see it. <laughs> In part one of our guide, we explored some of the top destinations to visit on both the European and Asian sides of the city, including the High Sophia, Topkapi Palace and Jamlija Mosque, the largest mosque in both Istanbul and Turkey. But we didn't manage to squeeze in everything and there are a few more must-see locations on the European side of the city that we'll share with you in this video to round out our guide to Istanbul. Of course, no trip to Istanbul would be complete without a trip to the bazaars. There are actually two. One of them is the Grand Bazaar, the other one is the Spice Bazaar. And we are currently in the Grand Bazaar. We're going to be exploring and showing you around. Already it's apparent just how much stuff you could buy here and how much money you could spend. <laughs> The Grand Bazaar is one of the largest and oldest covered markets in the world, with over 4,000 separate shops inside. It's huge and at times disorientating, but it is an absolute must when visiting Istanbul. You could spend days browsing for all sorts of items and souvenirs and most likely get lost while doing so. crazy experience. The place is just so huge. The Grand Bazaar itself is big, but even when you leave the bazaar, the markets just stretch outside for like kilometers. Massive area outside and inside. We did all right. We got away with not buying too much stuff, but just some nice kind of souvenirs. We're gonna go and explore the spice market now. More excited about it than the uh, Yeah. <laughs> The Egyptian Bazaar or Spice Bazaar is the place to go if you want to buy all sorts of sweets and spices. With over 80 shops selling Turkish delight, dried fruits and nuts, chocolate, spices and teas, you won't have any trouble finding something delicious to try. Mm -hmm. So pretty actually and the smell is amazing. Yeah. So we're trying to lay cheese and the cheese and spinach one. Well. So let's see. It's mm. good. Actually having it with these little yellow peppers is really nice. They're kind of like not any spicier than jalapenos really. So if you like jalapenos, really good, but just add a really nice flavor, a little bit of spice to it. After lunch, we walked along Istiklal Street, probably the most famous shopping street in Istanbul, and because of that, one of the busiest. You can take the old tram up and down, or walk along this pedestrianized street and stop to look in every single amazing shop or cafe window. Each one looks more tempting than the last. So we couldn't resist these shops any longer, so we decided to come in and treat ourselves with something very, very Look at these. Don't know how we're gonna get through. We're gonna put on so much weight in Turkey. And don't forget to try some Turkish ice cream for a one-of-a-kind experience.
Very close to Istiklal Street is the Galata Tower, a huge watchtower turned museum that can be seen from almost anywhere in Istanbul. You can go up for some amazing panoramic views of the city, especially during sunset or at night, although it's a little expensive and if you're on a budget, we have a great alternative we'll share later in this video. To end the day, we headed down to the Galata Bridge to watch the sun set over the city as the fishermen hauled in the day's catch and the birds swooped overhead. We can highly recommend spending at least one day watching the sun go down by the river. Of course we can't miss coming to this area called Bawat here in Istanbul, which used to be a very unique quiet spot. Mm. Oh, we've got mm. a cat visitor. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? It used to be like a quite unique thing to do here in Istanbul but obviously nowadays because we've got these beautiful colourful houses and things it's become more and more insta famous so you'll see a lot of content creators around this area but we couldn't miss the opportunity to come here and take some pictures because we love the colourful district Oh, there we go, you found one. Aww, that's cute. Definitely recommend a visit and you can come pretty early in the morning like 9am and there literally won't be that many people here at all no, um, compared yeah. to the other locations oh, yeah. we've been to this it's is like definitely the, the quietest so and you can get some really cool and, and unique kind of shots so yeah highly recommend Next, we headed across the city to Dormabachi Palace, a huge and ornate Ottoman Sultan's palace on the shores of the Bosporus. The palace is beautiful to explore, but it does come with a catch. So, walking around this palace has probably been one of the most mixed experiences we've had. I know, it's, it was a very much of a love-hate. Yeah. First of all, you can't take photos inside, so we can't show you how the palace looks inside. But trust us when we say that it's 100% worth going in there. It was it's just amazing. Like One of the most wow. like opulent palaces I think yeah. I've ever seen. It's definitely jaw-dropping yeah. experience. Especially like the grand uh, chamber oh, and man. the it's staircase. They're just stunning. so stunning. So where we got to that we can't take photos. On the other hand, oh my god, was it busy? <laughs> I think a number one tip would just be to come here. If you want to come oh, here, come yeah. as soon as it opens. <laughs> Try and avoid all of the tour groups. We're really quite close to where the cruise ships dock. So I think you get a lot of massive tour groups coming in from the cruise ships. We and bet it, like sheep. You like just herded just like herded. cattle, like all the way through. It's a one-way system. It kind of really takes away from the beauty of the place. 100% worth coming, but don't make our mistake and just come <laughs> first thing as soon as don't it opens. Don't eat your breakfast for no. too long, I agree with it. We left the palace and hopped on a bus further up the shore to the Ortakoy district and headed down to the waterfront where you can get an amazing view of the Grand Mesidie Mosque and 15th of July Martyrs Bridge which connects Europe with Asia across the Bosphorus.
So one thing we can highly recommend when you come here to Istanbul is obviously you can go to the Blue Mosque, but a great alternative is to come up to the Suleymaniye Mosque. They're only the second biggest city in the whole of Turkey. Yes. So definitely worth a visit. And the interior is just amazing. So it's beautiful. Really beautiful. Considering the fact that at the moment, as of us filming this video, the Blue Mosque is under renovation and you can't really see anything. No. This one is a really magnificent uh, alternative. Plus, if you go just across the street, there is an amazing little cafe there where you get some incredible views out over Istanbul. Probably equally as good as the Galata Tower. Of course, from this cafe, you can actually see the tower, so it's even better. Yeah. You can see the Bosporus Strait. It's just beautiful. Plus, there. yeah, the entrance fee is a lot cheaper because you only really have to pay for like a tea to, to get that view. Exactly. Really good recommendation is to come over and, and, and come up here to see, to see all that. Istanbul. What a city. We hope you've enjoyed this part of our guide and if you missed part one then make sure to head on over and check that out. But whatever you do, add Istanbul to your bucket list because you will not regret it.